inside my car. I got pictures, got candy, I'm a lovable man, and I can take you to the nearest star. I'm your vehicle, baby. There's a band called the Ides of March. Today is March 15th. The Ides of March. This is a big, big hit for these guys. A song called Vehicle. They love you. They need you. They got to have you, child. And he'd come and pick you up anywhere. A massive one-hit wonder for the Ides of March. The Chicago band. This was, at the time, 1970, this was the, um, it was the fastest selling single in the history of Warner Brothers Records. And then not much else happened. The guy in the band named Jim Peterick would go on to start a band called Survivor. You ever heard of Survivor, Poundcake? Yeah. This is the guy who wrote Eye of the Tiger. And obviously, um, Survivor went on to much bigger success than the Ides of March. But Did you have to read Julius Caesar in high school or college? You remember that? The Shakespeare? Mm-hmm. You wear the Ides of March? Yes. Do you know what the Ides of March are? Do you remember that? Mm-mm. When Caesar was assassinated? Is that what it was called? Yeah, beware the Ides of March. Oh, no, I didn't know that that's what it was called. What did you think that it was called? I don't I don't remember, but <laughs> I, I just remember they talked about Caesar being assassinated. Do you know how they killed him? Stabbed him. With a salad. Oh. Mm. Not with a salad? No, they stabbed him. Oh. That's dramatic. Stabbed him in the front and the back. Yeah. At two brutai. And then they made a delicious dressing in front of him, and that's how they tried to heal his wounds, but it was too little too late. Hey, your Cavaliers are uh, not playing tonight. In fact, they won't get another chance to show off their stuff until tomorrow. It's an early-ish game. That's a 5 o'clock game tomorrow on MMS, and you can also hear the game on the iHeartRadio app. 4.30 is when that pregame will begin. They're going to be in Houston to play the Rockets tomorrow. Cavs, Rockets. And then they'll be in Indianapolis on Monday to play the Pacers. And then they will come back home to play somebody uh, on Monday, I think. They'll be back to play the Hornets. So Miami on Sunday, back here at the Romo Fijo on Monday night against uh, Charlotte Hornets. And all of your basketball action here on your FM flagship for your Cleveland Cavaliers. If you're watching us today um, at alancockshow.com, thank you to Ferda Herta. <laughs> Ferda Herta for assisting in the video department. Uh, so thank you, sir or madam. Alan Poundcake needs to blow this wide open. We were talking about the Jersey Shore yesterday. Just as an aside, because I had seen uh, Bill, or one of you guys said you were watching Floribama Shore. Yeah, Poundcake, I guess you were Pound watching Cake, that. Yeah. And... Um, I mentioned that I had seen those Jersey Shore family reunion promos and it just kind of looked depressing because they're all grown up, they're all parents, but they're kind of expected to act the way that they did back in the day. And this person texted me and said, Pound Cake has to blow uh, the story wide open that nobody on the Jersey Shore is actually Italian. Um, I don't think that's true. Vinny's Italian. Uh, Snooki is not Italian, but she was adopted. She is Chilean. Well, I like where this person went, though. Any self-respecting Italian would never let their son or daughter represent their heritage the way that they did. Ah, yes. One thing you can count on the descendants of Italian immigrants is that they always conduct themselves in a manner that is best representative of their heritage. I was going to say mob wives. Maybe their granddad or grandma, but they're. this person says they're all Puerto Rican. Well, that's not the case either. I think I think that um, none of them are Puerto Rican. Well, first of all, I don't know why does it matter if the people on Jersey Shore aren't Italian. Because what it, does that have to do? It with was anything? an Italian thing. It, it, it was. It was. Yeah, like your Aguido was referred to as an Italian. They would have Sunday dinner, which is also an, an Italian tradition. Um, they had the Italian. I think flag a lot of everywhere. families have Sunday dinner. But it was the fact that the Jersey Shore was primary. I don't. I mean, I've never been to the Jersey Shore, but the way that the narrative. They, they were they, they were made was, they were playing into the hey New Jersey mm. we we got Sunday sauce on the stove is yeah, that what it, they were it, leaning it, into it was okay. it was that's where Italian families go to vacation because I guess I never really thought about it coming in from that Long way. Island or New York and that was like but they don't have like vacation spots on Long Island that's what we, like I mean they, well that's what they people. do I mean when when we were on the Jersey Shore uh, summer before last and we went to the 
Jersey Shore house, and I didn't know that that's where it was. I but told you, you that. I know you did, but we you were. Listen to me. No, no, no. We were hammered that day, and so I didn't realize where exactly we were. And I was like, "Oh, look at this giant gift shop with all Jersey Shore stuff." And Gwen's like, "Yeah, this is the house." I'm like, "Oh, okay." Was it a big like? Was it packed in there? Uh I mean, there were people in there. Yeah, it wasn't dead. But, I mean, I there mean, were. It's just genius marketing. Like after all these years, they got a they got a show that will transcend decades. People will still be going to that house maybe 10, 20 years from now because of that stupid show. Well, I didn't see a line for tours. I mean, they give tours of the upstairs where they lived. I didn't see anybody lined up for that. It's just people kind of maybe seasonal, bumping though. into racks of stuff, you know. The meatball. Yeah, like, we, yeah. We, we, got a, we got a fridge magnet because <laughs> we found one with our daughter's name on it. And so it's uh, got Snooky on it. And obviously she's not going to know what that is, but it made me laugh. But apparently this person really, as, uh, as Pound Cake is, not only – uh, the best sports talker in Cleveland, according to the readers of Cleveland Scene Magazine. But he's also, I think, uh, he's kind of, with all due deference and respect to Perez Bilton, mm-hmm. I think in, in, in Pound Cake in many ways is the one who will do the deepest dives on those kinds of things. So when this person texts and says, you got to have Pound Cake blow this wide open, uh, that person knows what they're doing. Well, I think that person also thinks I will take it ser- take it personal because I'm part Italian. So, you are, hey! I gotta do it for my my heretics that I don't connect with at all. Maybe you should. I would like to. I, I mean, that's that's one of the things that I that I really struggle with is I have heritage. I have German heritage and uh, Italian heritage, and I don't connect with them at all, other than you know my DNA makeup. I I, I can look it sometimes, but I don't know any. You know, traditional dish. I don't know any language. I've never been to Italy. I don't have any relatives that I can relate to other than my father. And he doesn't He doesn't seem Italian at all. He just seems like a dude. Doesn't seem Italian. It, it just, it's like he, his mom was Italian and his dad was German. Um, and it just, it, it, he doesn't show any type of tradition whatsoever. He's not connected to his heritage either. I don't think so. There was never. Like, well, it's he, perfect time to bring it back. He talked about how his mom was such a great cook, and I've never had any of her cook, and she was senile by the time I, you know, really got to talk to her. Actually, I didn't even really talk to her. I don't think she knew who I was. I was just some color. You want me to come over and make you some Sunday sauce? I'll bring meatballs. I'll bring sausage. I'll bring the wine. I'll crush the tomatoes. I'll get you the pecorino. I'll, uh, we're go- the, we're going to make the noodles al dente. I'm going to bring some bread. You want me to come over and make it for you? It takes all day. Ugh, no, who, who doing dishes? I'm not doing Me, dishes. I love doing dishes. Okay. What are you talking about? So you're gonna cook and do the dishes? When yeah. I cook, you know, when I cook, uh, I, I'm 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 using all of the pots and pans in the kitchen. So yeah, there's a lot of dishes to be done. Yeah. I if think. I'm making a, a giant stock pot of chili, if I'm making Sunday sauce, uh, there's all kinds of yes. I I I have to be left to my own devices because I'm cutting and chopping and crushing, and then over here I'm. You know, I've got to cook some things, and I've got to peel some other things, and it's a whole its a whole process. Yeah. I, I don't get to do it often, but when I do, I'm all in. That seems kind of unfair, like doing doing dishes and having to clean up, too. I don't or, mind I mean, it. Um, cooking and then doing the dishes? I don't mind it. Okay. I mean, I do the dishes when Gwen cooks, and I do the dishes when I cook. Wow. Who okay. does the dishes when Nora cooks? We all do the dishes when she cooks. Actually, we just throw the dishes away. Mm, and the food. Yeah. <laughs> no, the food's great, actually. Oh, she's a good cook. Oh, yeah, because we sent her off to um, the CIA. Mm. But, uh, yeah. Did Nora... Spy food. I used to do this when I was a kid. <laughs> uh, when I would stay over like my aunt's house, I would get like her big pots and pans, fill them up with water, and then pour like uh, hard noodles in there and just like stir them around and pretend like I was cooking. Did Nora ever do that? No. Oh, okay. Nope. She's not pretending she's cooking because she's actually cooking. Because yeah, no. as I just said, she got her certification from uh, the Culinary Institute of America. Youngest graduate of all time. She have an easy bake oven. No. Wow. No. She didn't. She didn't want anything to come too simply. So we got her the difficult bake oven. <laughs> she felt that if you really worked for it, you'd feel a greater sense of accomplishment. That's what we've tried to. It's what I've tried to instill in all my children. Uh. Anything that comes easy, uh, you're gonna feel uh, you're gonna feel less 
accomplished by it. So we got her the difficult bake oven. And uh, now, granted, she hasn't used it because the instructions are, wow, they weren't kidding. They're really hard to decipher. First of all, you have to build the thing. Um, and I, I hadn't counted on that. Every kid should have an easy bake oven. I had one. Bruh, it's no, so I did not. It's Come so on. It's so lit. Like, you get to make your own snacks. You're what cooking can- a, you're, you're cooking dough with a light bulb for four hours? Like, yeah. come on, man. It was fun. It was fun, and you got to make your own brownies. <laughs> like, I, I didn't have one. I stole my brother's because he was fat, and he he made, he. Your got mom one. got your brother an easy he, bake oven. That's what he wanted for Christmas. All right. And I, <laughs> and I teased him for it because I was, because it came, it, it was marketed to girls, and it came of in, course. like, it came in this big pink box, and it was like, I was like, bro, you really got an easy bake oven? He's like, whatever, I'm about to make my brownies. I was going to say, he wanted something he could cook food in his room. Bruh. Uh, So he made it. And then, like, when he would go away, again, me being the snooping prime brother, I was like, I'm going to make one of these. Why didn't your mom just teach you guys how to use the oven? Because she didn't use the oven. (laughs) Oh, really? (laughs) She didn't didn't know how? She knew how, but no. She wasn't. She wouldn't trust us to. My brother ended up going to culinary school, so he learned how to cook during in high school. But. No, she wasn't going to trust us. I was cutting up glass in the backyard. Like, I, she wasn't going to trust us to work the oven while she was sleeping. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that, I guess. So, no, she was okay with the the parental advisory, uh, uh, you know, the adult assembly required easy bake oven. It, that was enough for her. Burn, burn on a light bulb rather than burning on, like, the rack in the oven. Mm-hmm. But, dude, it was lit, though. Even though... The the it was like powder that they gave you and then you just put water in it so you could either put yeah, water or baking milk. Is. But it was like that's all you did. Every all uh, there's a lot of baking that is just they have the mix and then you add the water and maybe an egg sometimes and then heat. I don't even think it was an egg. Well, I think yeah, everything was for included. them. They made it very very simple. <laughs> <laughs> but those brownies were always terrible. It was awful, but it was just so cool. That I was like, I can eat this, and then it just like was like this paste around my mouth. What was the, <laughs> the? Remember the creepy crawlers that you could make? Do you remember those? Yeah, I do remember those. I didn't have one of those. My mom, my neighbor had one of those. You could make basically gummy worms and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, that was too messy. You my could mom do. Wasn't you could. That. They had one version that was just making like little rubber ones, but then they're like, oh, you can make these food and give you sugar and yeah. gelatin, and yep. you can make them. Easy bake oven, man. That that was a childhood dream. Well, it was your brother's dream. And he got to live it. And you got to live vicariously <laughs> through him. Well, yeah, I didn't I didn't ask. I would just make his stuff. I know. Alan, the Culinary Institute of North Texas is more prestigious than CIA. That is true, but we were thinking of sending her there, but then when I saw the sweatshirts, I was like, absolutely. Not. Plus, I didn't want her to be so far away. I would have missed her, and she's only eight. What what was wrong with the sweatshirts? Ugly color scheme? Bill, see me after the show, will (laughs) you? And ugly colors, yes. I go, pink, black is brown. Come on, man. Pink and brown. Yeah, you're walking around like Easter candy. Alan, I'm a native East Sider. I grew up in Painesville, but spent a lot of time in Willoughby for school and work. It's awesome to see all the love for the east side, specifically Willoughby, when you guys go out there. They work really hard to make it a decent place to live and visit. Although I've lived in Lakewood for a few years now, I believe that the west side is better. Just cut Parma out and swap it with Beechwood. The the curmudgeonness of Parma doesn't gel well with the rest of the west side. My hot take. I think of Parma as like its own thing. Yeah, like David S. Pumpkins. Mm-hmm. It's its own thing. I like Parma, man. I've never had a bad time in Parma. I mean, it's it, it contains multitudes, so I don't even think of it as something that like does or doesn't fit in with the rest of the, you know. Well, I don't. It's not that I've had a bad experience, and I don't get like the uh, the stigma that comes with living in Parma. I just don't like going through there because there's no easy way to get there. There's no easy way to get there. There's no easy way to get out. There's no highway. That well, what's the matter with that? You take the scenic there's route no and you easy learn. easy way out. <laughs> you, the, I don't you, like that. You learn like... something new every time. I don't like having to go through several traffic lights in, to get into a city. I several get traffic lights. Life is traffic lights. But I like to get off at an exit and then, bam, I'm in a city. Like Willoughby. You get off on the highway. You're, you're at the first traffic light. You're in Willoughby. Like, I don't like having to go around, get off at this exit, go up a few more streets, turn, then you're in Parma, and then 
you're trapped in Life perma. Life is so tough for him. It's you know he doesn't just, want to go through so many traffic well, lights to get to where he well, wants to get. I guess he also doesn't like Cleveland Heights and stuff like Shaker for the same reason because they don't have correct quick e- access. He East- likes. He likes easy access. East Side is a, a different world for me. Like East Side and West Side are too different. I don't even really compare them because it, 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 they're just different. There's way more businesses on the East Side, it, like restaurants I've never tried. What do you mean, uh, way more businesses way more, on the East Side? There, there are, you... There's like way more franchises that aren't over here on the West Side. Like what? Oh, God, we were over there. Franchises. There are. They're like different food franchises that aren't over here on the West Side. Like, uh, Bitty Bop or whatever, Bitty Boop. Bitty Bop. There's one at Crocker Park. Okay, one. There's way more. But that was the one example I had. I forgot. Uh-huh. But there's more of them over there on the Oh, side. okay. Well, I believe you. I just, uh, as a West Sider, just, I don't get over. I mean, when I went to Willoughby on over. Saturday night, that was the first time I'd been over there in a long time. That's why I was excited to get back over there. Because I hadn't been uh, in a minute. But, uh, okay, there you go. That's that guy's hot. Take Mike in Parma. Uh, wants to make sure that you stay off his lawn. <laughs> Living up to the curmudgeon status. <laughs> 480 goes right into Parma. What the hell is Pound Cake talking about? I don't know what he's talking about. I'm just playing along and smiling and nodding. Yeah, but if you don't have, if you don't want to get on 480, <laughs> Pound Cake's going to find a reason to complain about it. Listen, that's fine. I, 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 you know, I don't mind Parma. It's either. his car. It's his, uh, he can go wherever he wants. I just don't ever have a problem with taking the scenic route. You yeah. know, like if I'm driving somewhere, and this happened last time because I was so I was so um, enthralled in what I was listening to in the car that I missed my exit. And I thought, okay, I'll take the next exit, and then I'll find my way around to where I need to be. And that way, uh, you take a little bit more of a scenic route, something that you had uh, never seen before perhaps. But there's like five or six highway exits into Parma off of... Off of 480, I think. Mm-hmm. And I don't think of Parma as west side. That's like south, yeah, right? right? That's down to whatever. That's why I say it's like its own thing. Like when people say west side, I think they think of like Ohio City, Tremont. Oh, uh, I think further Fairview out Park, than that. People are saying, talking like, about west like in yeah, Avon. You know? Like well, yeah, west, like, like 90. You go in 90. West side's 90. Anything that's off of 90, like Lakewood is west side. But yeah, Avon, Rocky River, that's west side. The creepy crawlers were called incredible edibles. That's what it was. The ones you yeah, could eat. Yeah. And now you can mix them with weed. That's the mm-hmm. new that's yeah. the new yeah. Kids, don't let your parents know. You can put THC in these now. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't tell your parents. Jesus, did you see Cara Delevingne's house? No. Oh. Burned to the ground. We were wow. just talking about Cara Delevingne. If you see, um, if you know who she is, she's a model. She's an actress. She's been in a bunch of things. Um, they keep ch- kind of trying to make her a big deal in movies and TV, but it's kind of not there yet. But um, the other day when we were talking about relevant lesbians, her name came up. And she has this massive house in the Hollywood Hills, and it burned to the ground. A fire started at like 3 in the morning. She's in England. She's working, doing something else. They called out 13 engines, 94 firefighters, four ambulances sent to the property before they got it under control. The thing is down to, like, embers. And it's a massive house. That's crazy. Imagine you get a call overseas, right? Time difference. Who knows what you're doing? Hey, your house is on fire. It was built in 1941 for the family that founded the Vons supermarket chain out there. And she bought it some years ago. It was in Architectural Digest, like an amazing house, big house. I'm surprised as much of it burned as Huge. it did. You th- yeah, you wouldn't think that that whole thing would, yeah. you know. And you're up there in the hills, and one of her neighbors got to be crap in their pants too. But you get imagine you get the call overseas. Yeah, your house um, burned to the ground. A seven million dollar house. And that's the thing. I, that's what I want to know. How can you be like a B C level actress and have a seven million dollar house. You're 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 not well, making that much money. Yeah, you are. You, but she was also like modeling. A model yeah, and, for a long time. And she, even if she never like popped as a big actress, I think she got big deals because she was in some blockbuster movies, and I I think she got good paydays off of those. It's the same thing with uh, when uh, XXX Tentacation died. <laughs> he had that big mansion. Like mm-hmm. it was like a five million dollar mansion in Florida, and I'm like, bro, he like 
he's popular for his his fan base, but not really anybody else. He's not mainstream right, yet. Right, but if you, have, you have a, a fan base, dollar- because you can have a fan base and make a ton of money if you ha- if you're touring and making money off of them. Like, it, it you don't have to be worldwide famous anymore. That's, Plus, let's, that's the whole thing. Let's cut to the chase. She comes from wealth, too. I mean, her her, okay, her, gra- her, her grandfather okay. was like British royalty or something. Okay, so it's, well, yeah. they're, 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 but, but in her own right, she was been very successful modeling and doing stuff. So she's made money, but she does come from money, too. I mean, two things can be true. I was going to say, but like modeling, and again, I don't know that too awful much about modeling, but the the one percent of the one percent is making the million dollar photo shoots and getting the million dollars. She's in there. That. Yeah, she's in there. She's up there with like the Gigi Hadids and stuff. I think so. Gigi, yes, and Gigi Hadid. Yeah, like the Hadids are like. But they're also a rich and, family, and, so it doesn't matter if she gets gigs or not. Okay. Hey, I got a break. You want to send a text three five one nine two? You can listen wherever you are on the iHeartRadio app. The Alan Cox Show on one hundred point seven WMMS.